supported by I get the impression that innovation plays a huge part in the development of Norway, especially in areas that bring wealth to the country. A visit to Norway's oil and gas company, Stad Oil's research center in Trondheim, with over 600 employees focusing only on research and development, shows just how crucial investment in innovation and technology is in boosting the country's oil and gas production as well as in finding new ways to create renewable energy for the future. Today, Norway is the second largest net exporter of gas and the seventh largest exporter of oil in the world, with a production target that goes up every year as they find new methods to, to increase oil recovery. Indeed, oil and gas make up a significant source of revenue for the country, something that we in Indonesia can learn from as this country has declined from being an exporter of oil and an OPEC member to becoming a net importer that we are now, part of it due to the lack of R&D. This is ironic, as one of the researchers currently taking his PhD at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology in Trondheim is a young Indonesian, Luki, who has a scholarship to research new technology to maximize oil recovery that will no doubt further benefit Norway's petroleum industry. Okay, um, I've been in Norway now for quite a few days and I've met some wonderful um, Norwegians and um, of course the country is not, uh, in terms of population, nowhere near as big as Indonesia but in terms of the um, income per capita, I mean it's, it's immensely um, rich and I'm sure there are many things that we could learn uh, from Norway and I see there's a lot of research and development and innovation. now. For our viewers who are perhaps not too familiar with Norway, what, what would you say is the sort of the Norwegian spirit? Well, what does Norway as a country stand for? Well, we are a fairly egalitarian society. Um, the differences here are maybe less than in many other countries. Um, we have a quite sort of inclusive economy, a very open economy. Uh, we trade a lot, uh, we have very important uh, trading partners uh, all over the world, but uh, of course the most important are in Europe uh, when it comes to size. Um, and uh, we like to um, try at least to include everyone in the economy and in our uh, society as best as we can. Um, one example would be gender issues where we um, try to have as many women as possible involved um, in politics and um, uh, business mm -hmm. um, and we're quite successful at that um, where we see both that it's the right thing that everyone has opportunity to have a career um, in um, business or in uh, politics or academia or other things um, and also it makes economic sense uh, that we use uh, you know, 100% of uh, our working force instead of 50%. Um, and also that uh, we get the benefits of uh, the innovation mm -hmm. and that it brings with it where everyone gets uh, to come up with good ideas and, and get involved in and developing new products and, and new ways of, of doing things. And well, tell me more about this sort of spirit to mm. innovate and to always improve things, which is, um, I think it, it, it's something that's, that's fascinating and something that we can certainly learn and hopefully benefit from the technology and the innovation from Norway. Is this something that is, um, you know, being encouraged as part of the strategy of, of the country? Well, we would definitely like to think so, um, but uh, obviously that is something that's uh, important to all countries, uh, innovation and finding new ways to um, organize society, new ways to um, you know, produce or to um, find innovative um, uh, products, uh, new developments. Um, one example in Norway is our offshore uh, oil and gas um, industry um, because you know it's tough uh, climate-wise, it's cold, uh, our resources are deep down on the uh, ocean, um, on the bottom of the ocean, mm -hmm. uh, so it's difficult to get at. Um, so the um, 
industry that has developed um, has become very um, focused on high technology and to uh, have robust uh, and environmentally friendly um, solutions. Um, and uh, that has, has made us competitive also on the, on the world stage and um, there is quite a lot of uh, um, also service and um, other sort of related industries uh, that service the, the platforms and um, that is also an important part of, of the Norwegian economy. The petroleum economy is important in Indonesia and it is in Norway. Uh, we have the oceans in common. Um, and uh, uh, that's part of uh, an important part of both our history and our identity. In a way, you know, keeping yes. everything environmentally friendly. This is also something that we can learn in Indonesia. How how is that, um, you know, being implemented? Is is this something that is continually being improved? How to create businesses that are environmentally friendly, a lifestyle that is that is green. Many ways. Uh, in Norway, we are lucky that we have, for instance, hydropower. So most of most of our electricity uh, comes from hydropower. Almost all of it. We produce uh, as much hydropower as we use for electricity. Um, and uh, I know there's quite a lot of potential also in Indonesia uh, for um, developing hydropower. Um, that was actually the start of our whole industrialization and economic growth. Norway used to be a quite poor country. Um, and now, um, after we were able to harness the resources from um, our rivers uh, and, and uh, lakes, um, that has, has been a, a great source um, and sort of a foundation uh, of our economic development. In terms of concrete uh, assistance or you know, partnership, what, what is Noe you know, planning to put on the table for Indonesia in order to encourage uh, you know, this type of environmental concern? Well, we are spending some money in Indonesia today uh, on setting up the systems and the organizations. But what we really want to do is to pay Indonesia for concrete results. So we have pledged one billion US dollars mm -hmm. and we are going to spend that money when we see results in terms of reduced deforestation. This, was, this is payment for delivering world, the world the service of uh, not reducing the area of, uh, of the rainforest, but instead taking care of the forest. It's payment for, uh, for keeping uh, trees standing instead of cutting them down. Most of us like to be more environmentally conscious. But in general, a social system is not designed to make a greener lifestyle an easier choice. So for once, it's nice to be in a place where people who care about the environment and want to reduce the carbon footprint in their daily life are encouraged to do so by the government with incentives and reduced taxes. So Jenny, we get to drive on the bus lane, which is a privilege, right? It is a privilege. It, um, this wasn't the main reason why I bought the vehicle, though. Um, I bought it because I wanted to contribute to the environment, and this is, was my way of showing that I can be doing something good. Because the vehicle has zero emission, and you can see there's a lot of traffic, uh, pollution, and that's why I wanted to do something good. The second thing is obviously that I can drive on the bus lane and that gets me quicker to work. What is also good is what we will see soon is the toll roads are free. Meaning when I pass the toll road I don't pay anything for it. Okay. And that's a very good incentive. Jenny, who owns an electric car in Oslo, finds that driving it has more advantages than fuel driven cars quite a lot of cable. Plus, it makes her feel good about not polluting the environment. So we're going to charge it. Basically, it's just putting the plug into the socket. Exactly, and putting it into my other socket in the car vehicle. So I can leave this vehicle now here for 16 hours and then go to work. Supported by
Welcome. Today I visit Knuth, who is on daddy leave. His wife has gone back to work, so it's his turn to stay at home and look after the baby for a couple of mums. Married men in Norway have to do their part taking care of the babies so that women can go back to work when they're ready to do so. In a country where both men and women work and make their contribution to society, who says that cooking and taking care of the babies are a woman's job? There we go. <laughs> and the world is a better place. So how long did it take you to adjust and what sort of trouble did you find? Well, I just, uh, I didn't really know what I was doing, you know? So the diapers, I didn't change them often enough. I didn't feed him often enough. I didn't make sure that he went to sleep uh, enough. Mm -hmm. So he cried all day uh, for two weeks. And then I got a system and my wife tipped me, obviously. My mother helped me. And then one day, everything worked. But why did you uh, decide? Is this something that you decided or is this something that you and your wife? Well, uh, she was at home for 10 months before I'm at home. Uh, the, and and I, we can't choose, really. The government, the state, uh, wants the men to stay at home for three months. Knut is not only an expert in changing nappies, but also seems to enjoy the experience of child raising, and all supported by the state, where paternal leave is as compulsory as maternal leave. In general, Norwegians pay a lot of taxes. But if in return the people get cradled to grave health care and social welfare, and if it creates an equitable society without gender discrimination, then it certainly a system that works. I spoke to, um, and I've, I've seen parks, you know, men with, with their strollers, with their babies, and it's, uh, and I spoke to a young man who is taking daddy leave. Now, I'm interested in this idea of the egalitarian society, opportunities for women and, you know, to really fully participate in business, um, politics, and, you know, um, so why is it so, I mean, obviously it's important women make up 50% of, um, of who we are in yes. the world. Why is it um, it's important to give this kind of you know, opportunities, uh, equal opportunities for women, where it's in, perhaps in some other countries they're not as open-minded when it comes to gender equality? So two reasons. One is that it's the right thing, that everyone has um, the same opportunities. Uh, and secondly, because it makes good economic sense uh, to involve everyone. So it's interesting the way it's done, I guess, because uh, one of the um, ways it's done in Norway is um, parental leave. Um, so there's um, parental leave that sort of the mother is for the mother, and there's parental leave for the father, which is like six weeks. Um, and then also there's a, a year where the parents can um, divide the time between them. Uh, so the father could actually take quite a lot of time off work um, if um, that is what the couple decides on. Um, and that's been quite successful in the, in the Norwegian context. Um, I'm curious just that, you know, we have the, the parliament, obviously the, the prime minister, uh, is the head of government, and yet there's the, the monarchy, the, yes. the royal family. Yes. Perhaps could, uh, could you explain how does that work exactly, and where do the sort of decision making um, Absolutely. processes? Absolutely, yes. Well, um, Norway is a full fledged democracy. Uh, we have a constitutional monarchy, meaning in the Norwegian context that um, it is uh, the government, the prime minister's cabinet, that is uh, the executive. They are the ones that decide on the budget together with the parliament, etc. Um, and um, uh, the monarchy has more formal functions mm -hmm. um, rather than uh, direct political power. Uh, so uh, that is something that has developed uh, through our history. Um, uh, Crown Prince, uh, what does a, a Crown Prince do? Do you have a sort of set? duties or, or jobs or things that, you know, that's your focus? 
Yes, in, in a, to yes, exactly. So, in, in addition to um, uh, the constitutional work that what we do nationally and internationally um, on behalf of Norway, we also have some focus areas um, where we spend quite a bit of time. Um, my wife is focusing on HIV/AIDS a lot. She's worked as special representative for UN AIDS um, for several years. She's very focused on uh, youth issues. Um, and uh, health issues. Uh, I have been working on um, uh, the Millennium Development Goals together mm -hmm. with the United Nations Development Program. Um, so that's been been very exciting. Because um, it's poverty alleviation, education. That's right. Um, These eight concrete mm -hmm. goals that the world leaders um, decided on in 2000 in the UN. Uh, so, um, ending extreme poverty, health, mm -hmm. education, uh, environment, climate, etc. And it's supposed to um, end by 2015, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, the targets mm -hmm. are for um, uh, 2015. Uh, and the high level panel that your president is, is part of uh, are looking at uh, the period after 2015. What should be uh, you know, our goals after that? And mm -hmm. how, how should we go about that? So, that's really important work, critical work um, in the UN. Still. And you and the Crown Princess have a foundation as well. That's focusing right. On you. Tell, tell us a little bit more about that and the kind of work that you're doing. Our foundation is focusing uh, on youth um, and we have uh, four different projects uh, in Norway that are working on um, including uh, young people that uh, have um, for different reasons had a tough time in uh, school maybe and in uh, sort of the regular uh, way of um, following education. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we believe that everyone has something to offer and everyone has um, a lot of resources. We just need to figure out a way uh, how we can find them and together. So this is basically uh, innovative ways of um, um, bringing these young people um, back on track and helping them uh, with uh, education and also getting a job and um, and becoming, uh, you know, uh, getting their potential out, uh, which is important. What comes to mind when talking about Norway? Norwegian salmon. After oil and gas, fish is the country's other main export. As a matter of fact, Norway is the world's second largest fish exporter after China and salmon is high up on the list. It's expensive to buy in Jakarta, so I want to make sure I have as much Norwegian salmon in the country's best seafood as I can while I'm here, especially when it means helping one of Norway's top chefs prepare and cook the dishes. All I can say is the salmon Scallops, prawns and crayfish are the yummiest my tongue ever tasted.